Katie said she's got a lower back pain down there. It's really tight. Really tight. Anybody else have? I think it's my hand. Yeah, that's wow. sore. This is tight. <laughs> it's my shoulders and my back. Shoulders, lower back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Morning, Maggie. Most of the time, if it's lower back, I would say take it easy on forward bends, um, but really focus on getting your hips. I mean, your um, your glutes and your hamstrings, and maybe. You know, maybe we'll do some some twisting, but if we're doing anything forward bending, just I mean, go, go slow. Yeah, just go go easy and pay attention to what your back is feeling because you don't want to create extra. Sometimes stretching is not the best thing to do when it's when tight. Back. Yeah. Sometimes massage first and then. We did that yesterday. Yeah. I was thinking the combo. Yeah, but if it still feels really tight. And then, and then stretch it. So come to sit in Supasana, comfortable cross leg. And bring your right foot in front. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, let your shoulders relax down away from your ears. Shoulders relax down through your arms, your hands, your fingers. Soften your jaw. And as you breathe in and out through your nose, just begin to bring your awareness to your breath. Notice how your body naturally relaxes as you exhale. And follow that natural rhythm of your breath. And each time you exhale, soften, relax, let your body release with your exhale. As we go through our practice, practice today, keep your focus on your breath. That's what's going to help you to relax, come into a pose, and just sit or be and allow your body to do what it will do without getting in the way. Bring your chin to your chest very slowly. Again, relaxing through your shoulders, keeping your jaw nice and loose. Slowly roll your head over to the right. And you come to stillness here. Just the first 
first principle of Zen is to find your edge. So you're coming to an edge where you feel a good amount of resistance. In this case, in the left side of your neck, in the shoulder maybe. You come to stillness. You return to your breath. You relax those places where you might be holding on to tension, to resistance, to discomfort. And then breathe. And as we exhale, we soften and relax. slowly roll your head forward chin to your chest spaces you might find. As you move, try not to avoid those uncomfortable places, but go right through them so we can start to break up all of the stuff that's congested around our bones, around our joints. We're moving through the fascia. in with your shoulders, soften your jaw. Forward, chin to your chest. And let's roll back to the right. Taking the right hand out to the right, palm down. And again, find that good edge of resistance for your neck, for your shoulder. Try to relax through that left shoulder as much as you can. We're going to slowly start to lower the right elbow towards the floor or to a block. If you're feeling a little tight in your hips or your left side body, you can start with a block. You're going to find that first edge, but maybe as you come to settle here, you can go to a smaller prop or take the prop away altogether. As you settle in, when things start to open up. Sometimes stretching out through your side, through your um, obliques, can also relieve some of that lower back tightness and tension because it's all of those muscles around there that are actually tight. So if your elbow's already on the floor and you want to find that next edge, you can just start to slide the elbow away from your body. 
And again, come back to your breath. Breathe into those spaces where you feel tight. And as you exhale, soften. Let your head fall. Let your jaw relax. Let that left arm relax as much as you can. Switch the feet from your right one to the inside, left one to the outside. Lori, you would be very happy to know that I have a timer. <laughs> oh, <I like> <laughs> All right, chin to your chin. to the left, relax the shoulders, soften your jaw. This way Lori can't accuse me of holding the pose for more than three minutes. <laughs> Take some deep breaths in those spaces where you feel tight. And as you exhale, follow that natural rhythm of your body and soften. Let go. And let's slowly start to lower that left elbow towards the floor or the rock. It's kind of good to start high so you can listen to your body. You can always adjust by removing the prop or going to a smaller prop.
close that arm, bring your hands up, and just turn up with the wrist, both directions. We do a lot of stuff with our wrists, our hands, in both yoga and CrossFit, so we need to be conscious of conditioning our wrists and taking care of our hands. Open the palms of your hands, thumbs up, stretch your fingers. Curl your fingers into your palms, curl your thumbs around your fingers, and then spring your fists out towards the front. And press your fists down towards the floor and bend your palms. Grab onto your little finger and just gently stretch it. Just get a little, little pressure with your left hand. And then your middle finger. Your ring finger. Try to let your wrist relax when you're doing this. Sometimes when you stretch your thumb like this, you might feel a little bit of sensation in your forearm. So that lets you know if you have tight muscles in your forearms. Sometimes I take a uh, pressure point ball and actually roll, or I, I'll take my knee if I have my hands on the floor or arms on the floor and just massage my palm with my knees. muscle in my hand right here from doing like weed whacking for a long time. <laughs> and it's still tight, I feel it. Just go back to base. Stretch your fingers one more time. Put, bring your to your shoulders, fingertips to your shoulders, and big circles with your elbows. So make a big circle to the back. Try to keep your jaw relaxed. Whenever we come into the shoulders, we tend to clench our jaw or tighten our jaw. Really move through your shoulders. Full range of motion. Your 
Grab our bolsters. Bring your bolster right behind you. And you're just going to come to sit up on the edge of the bolster. And bring your feet out to the width of your mat. And then scoot it out to the edge of your bolster as far as you can. Bringing your knees to your elbows to the insides of your knees. And gently pressing out. Coming into the hips. So this is just a supported yogic squat. to those places where you hold resistance to discomfort. The most common places are your shoulders, your jaw, your hands. Pressure on your knees with your elbows. Right, we're releasing that pressure with your elbows. We're going to bring the right hand, bring it behind your back, not really far behind your back, but really just to your right hip. Get rid of this stuff. Let's see what I'm doing. So bring your hand to your right hip. And then your elbow to the inside of your thigh or your knee if you can. If you don't have that much mobility in your shoulder, then just bring that arm length against the back side of your thigh or the outside of your thigh. If you can bring it to the inside, bring it to the inside. Staying relaxed through your shoulders and letting this right one release. Open your chest. That is when we're whispering, but it's the point where you can open your chest to the front of your mat. And you just very slowly work into that shoulder.
just slightly behind your back as you bring that elbow in front of the thigh if you can. If not, right to the outside of the thigh. You're still going to be getting work in that shoulder either way. to your breath. Use your, your breath to help you relax, release, let go. Relax muscles in your legs. Soften to your jaw, your right shoulder. Bolster, you can back up just a little bit and either stretch your legs out or cross your ankles. Good. So bring your chin to your chest. And again, relaxing through your shoulders, softening to your jaw, checking in with those places where you hold your resistance. Now we're going to interlace the fingers behind your head and bring about the middle of your hand, so the middle finger, to the base of your skull. Point your elbows down towards the floor and just let the weight of your hands be a gentle pressure. So don't add any extra pressure by pulling, just the weight of your hands and your arms. good to you to just kind of let your body come forward a little bit, bending at the waist. That adds a little bit of extra traction to your neck. So really, really relax your jaw with this. Always dealing with traction and compression. So we need both of those in order to work with the fascia, break up all the congestion. hands right where they are, we're going to slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. And as you come to the top, open your elbows as wide as you can and lean your head back into your hands. Okay, so we're going to push the bolster to the side. 
we come upon our hands and knees. So wrists right under your shoulders, knees right under your hips, hip width apart, shoulder width apart. Come into cow pose, press your belly button down towards the floor and lift your chest. Rounding your back, tuck your hips, tuck your chin into your chest, come into cat pose. Press your palms into the floor. And come back to a neutral spine. Let's sit back to child's pose. Take your knees apart, big toes together, big toes touching. Reach your fingertips out towards the front of your mat. Bring your forehead down to the floor or a block or a blanket. So just settle into your hips. Let your ears sink down between your shoulders. slowly come up onto your knees and we're going to come into puppy pose so make sure hips stay right over your knees and slide fingertips out towards the front edge of your mat so you can bring your either your forehead or your chin down to the floor or you can have a block underneath your head opening in your scapula between your shoulder blades. Also really good for releasing your shoulders into your pecs if you have tight pec muscles. Slowly slide those fingertips back. Eventually, we're going to come all the way down on our bellies. So come all the way down to your belly. Turn your head to one side or the other. And just let your spine settle. Maybe rock your hips from side to side.
take a deep breath into your belly. Just fill your belly with your breath. And as you exhale, let all of the air out. We're going to come into compression of the lower back, the lumbar spine. So for some of us, laying flat is enough, but we need to find our individual edge. So start to lift onto your forearms. Maybe just grabbing opposite biceps is enough for your lower back. So as you start to come up to find your edge, let your hips settle into the floor. Every time you come to a, a new stopping place, just let your hips settle. And then pay attention to what your lower back is feeling, to what it's telling you. And if it's saying that you need to go a little deeper, then you wanna come up on your elbows, lift your chest a little higher, relax the muscles in your glutes and in in your legs and let your lower back relax. Let your hips sink into your mat. So Sphinx pose is the gentlest of back bends. help our spines return to the natural curve. So if you have a tight back, as you're sitting in this back bend, you can go ahead and rock your hips from side to side again. It kind of helps you to relax that lower back, especially if it's already tight. As you need to come to a deeper edge, just get those elbows a little higher by putting your elbows up on a block. Or you can come to a bolster if you're particularly flexible in your lower back. But take it very slowly. Take it one step at a time. Let your hips settle into the floor. Take a deep breath into your belly, filling that space in your lower back. And as you exhale, again, let the hips sink down. back is one of the top three sites for osteoporosis to start. So this is good prevention, but also a good way to begin to build that healthy bone. If you've lost it.
you guys this all the time, but make sure you drink plenty of water after your practice because it's a good way to flush out toxins. Because as we are going through our practice, the lymphatic system is, is moving, getting moving. Holding poses, coming into compression, creating traction and extension works with your lymphatic system. Just like when you get a massage, the best thing to do is to drink lots of water after to assist in that flushing of toxins. back down to the floor and you can rest your head on the floor or on your arms let your spine settle again maybe rock your hips from side to side deep breath into your belly and as you exhale let it all feet, bend the knees, pointing your feet up to the sky. So still coming into the lower back from a different direction. Now for some of us laying flat and bending the knees is enough, and, but if you feel like you, know, you need a deeper edge, you can lift the chest a little bit. Really pay attention to your hip flexors, your quadriceps. You want to keep those feet pointing up towards the sky. Don't let them start to fall back down. So if lifting your chest makes your feet start to fall back down, then just go ahead and lower the chest again. Thing that really helps with the flexibility of your back is lengthening the muscles in your front body. So your quads, your hip flexors, and even the muscles in the front of your abdomen. So the more you lengthen those muscles, the healthier your back is going to feel. talk a lot about the, the glutes and the hamstrings being tight tending to pull on the lower back and that's definitely definitely true because those muscles pull on the pelvis but the flexibility of the back has a lot to do with how flexible you are in your hip flexors and your quads feet to the floor and bring your body all the way back down. Turn your head to the opposite direction, so the direction that's not automatically the most comfortable direction for you. And again, we're going to let that spine settle. So a way to take all of the pressure out of the spine, out of the back, is to bend one knee out to the side. 
So if you're still feeling a little bit of pressure, you can always bend one knee out to the side. And that relieves your back. Bring your hands to your upper ribs, straighten that knee if you've got a bone. And let's come up to hands and knees. Nice and slowly. We're gonna start in cow pose. So pressing that belly button down towards the floor and lifting the chest. So from cow pose, come back to a neutral spine. Nice and slow. And then we're going to come slowly into cat. So rounding the back, tucking the hips, tucking the chin into the chest. And then come back to a neutral spine. All right, come up on your knees. And we're going to come into standing shoelaces. So Walks close by if you need. Count your jelly bean upholstery. <laughs> I'm never going to stop giving you text messages. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get my kids to stick my forearm in the challenge. <laughs> it's a Jill thing. All right, tuck the left knee behind the right. We'll come to stand. Both knees grounded. Hips square to the front of your mat. Once you get settled, do the best you can to relax through those shoulders. Soften through your jaw. And once you get your balance, see if you can relax the muscles in your legs. Getting into the size of our hips. I T band, piriformis. Tips down or to your blocks. Now we're going to come to sit between your feet. So you can bring a block behind you or even a bolster if you need that. And everything's connected. So if this pose is normally not a big deal for you, if your lower back is tight, it might be a little bit. 
different. So either sitting on a block or sitting flat in your seat. Try not to sit on that left heel. spaces where you hold your tension and let it go. Each time you exhale, drop down. Natural instinct is to pull away from the discomfort in your knees and your hips. But every time we exhale, we want to drop into that discomfort. And just breathe through it. muscles in your legs as much as you can. So as you drop into your hips and you feel like you want to come to a deeper edge, you can start to bring your body forward. Now, if you have a tight back, this is actually a good one to do because you're stretching your hips at the same time. So if you want to try to come forward a little bit, and you're also getting into your glutes at the same time. So every time you come to a new edge, relax through your shoulders, relax through your jaw, relax the muscles in your legs, and sink in again. Come back to your breath. So the third ingredient is giving it time. There's three principles in here, finding that edge, coming to your breath, sitting still, and then giving it time. muscles in your legs. Your legs out. We're coming to a forward bend or cat bend. So I always start with this flat one underneath my knees just because it helps me to not take the pressure into my lower back but rather flex at my hips and not at my lower. So when you keep a bend in your knees, it helps you to stay out of your lower back and get into your hamstrings where you're supposed to be. So I'm gonna find that first edge. So kind of contrary to yin, which is all about just kind of letting go and relaxing, to get into our hamstrings, it's kind of important to pull the tailbone back towards the back edge of your mat, reach your chest towards your toes, then you can come forward and relax. So you can bring a bolster in front of you, a block, blanket, whatever you need. You relax the muscles in your legs. So 
as you feel your hamstring start to loosen up, then you want to find that next edge. You want to do that process all over again. You pull your tailbone or rock your pelvis back, reach your chest towards your toes, and then we relax. We relax the shoulders, we let the head fall forward, relax the muscles in the legs. Once you're comfortable that you're in your hamstrings and not your lower back, you can maybe remove the block from underneath your knees, but if you're more comfortable with it there, then just leave it. back up onto our knees. We can do our shoelace on the other side. Grab whatever we need. Our fingertips on the floor or the blocks. Tuck the right knee behind the left. Ground both knees to the floor. Come on up. Feel that in your lower back, right? your shoulders as much as you can. Once you feel like you have your balance, try to relax the muscles in your legs a little bit.
As you start to settle into your hips, make sure you're not sitting on that right foot. Come back to your breath, relax into your shoulders. Relax the muscles in your legs as much as you can. Come back to that rhythm of your breath. As you exhale, sink down. deeper into the hips, into the glutes, on the left side. Every time you exhale, relax the muscles in the legs, drop down into your hips. So let's take our feet wide. <clears throat> so bring your bolster probably in front of you is probably the best way to start to find a good edge. The other thighs are very difficult because they're so uncomfortable to stretch. So first you want to make sure your sits bones are flat on the floor. So moving the fleshy part so that your sits bones are nice and flat. And then come forward and support your body as much as you can. The more you support your skeleton, the more your muscles will let you have leave to stretch. the muscles in your legs. That's where we're going to hold on to it the most. Shoulders, always checking in with the shoulders and jaw, and then relax those muscles in your thighs.
Work with your breath. <coughs> As you exhale, soften the muscles in your legs. your bolster to the side. Oh, bring those feet in. Okay. That hurt me. That hurt you? <laughs> that one always gets me. Uh, I don't like it. All right, come all the way back to your back. <coughs> Knees bent, ankles and knees together, arms out to the sides. Or you can cross knees if that feels better for your supine twist. So as you exhale, drop your knees over to the right. Ground your shoulders to the floor. Turn your gaze to your left hand. And again, always support feel like your knees are kind of just hanging out there in the air, you can always put a block underneath your knee or between your knees, whichever helps you feel more supported so that your muscles can relax. If your skeleton doesn't feel supported, your muscles will tighten in order to support it. So on your next inhalation, bring your knees back to center. And let's go the other way. So if your knees are crossed or just ankles and knees together, as you exhale, drop your knees to the left, shoulders grounded to the floor, turn your gaze to your right hand. Breathing into any of those spaces where you feel tight, so lower back, Maybe your pecs, your hips, as you exhale, soften and release.
back to muscles in your legs. Next inhalation, bring the knees back to center and make yourself comfortable for Shavasana. Breathing in and out through your nose at a comfortable rhythm for your body. Each time you exhale, Sink into your mat. Letting go of any remaining tension from the top of your head down through the tips of your toes. in your face, your forehead, between your eyebrows, around your eyes. Relax your jaw and let your chin drop down to your chest or your shoulder. Releasing all of the tension in your shoulders out to your arms, your hands, your fingers. tension in your chest, between your shoulder blades and around your rib cage. In your lower back and in your belly as you breathe in and out, just let your body do what it naturally does. No effort. Let your hips sink into your mat as you exhale. And relax every muscle in your legs, your thighs, your hamstrings, around your knees, your calves, all around your ankles, the soles of your feet, down through the tips of your toes. And breathe. Let go. Stretch your fingers, wiggle your toes. And as you give your body a gentle stretch, begin to move around very slowly. As you feel ready, roll to your right side, away from your heart.
Thanks for joining me. I will see you.